I have just made a realization. Four and two, four, six, ten. And that's four and that's four, eight. Yes. Yes. I can make an echo pog. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so far. <laughs> Where's my sofa? Oh, it's downstairs. <laughs> Hello, episode 35. And let today be the day where I create my first Echopog, which I have been on a quest for for a while because it's going to allow me to upgrade this thing to a crafting grid, which is going to help me tremendously. Now, I need to turn these four into one perfect echo gem, and then I need four more gems, which I am guaranteed here. And the way I'm gonna get them is by gambling this first one. They look so cool. I love, I love the look of echo ore. <laughs> they do look a little bit sad though. As I said, I'm gonna gamble the first one, and if I get super lucky, I could get four here. I didn't get zero, I got, I got three. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Hmm. Now, does that mean that I gamble a second one? I, c I could just smelt one down at this point in time and I would get one, but yes, I, I shall gamble one more. Come on. Yes, not zero. Two. Oh, I'm there. I have it. I didn't even need to do my, my special thing which I now feel obligated in showing you, because not everybody knows about this trick. Remember the void liquid that I collected in the architect vault last time? As I said, it does have a few uses in terms of crafting, but it also has another use. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in right there. And I'm not actually gonna do this with the echo ore. I'm gonna grab another ore. Let's do a mm, black opal. Now, if I smelt a black opal, I get one gem guaranteed. If I fortune it, I get zero to whatever fortune level I have. But what I could do is drop this in and boom, it gets, gets me two every single time. Better than smelting, it does consume the void liquid. So I'd need I need more liquid, more void liquid to keep doing that. But that was my plan with the echo. If if all else failed, I was I was gonna do that. But I got lucky. So here we are, and I, I even got some echo ore and gems to spare. This is a big day. Like that, and there it is. The mysterious echo pog. Yes! Wow, I've, 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 I'm over the moon of this. This is exciting. Okay, so then I'm going to need a processor. I think I think one of these. And I'm going to need some more Larimar. Maybe like four. I should, I should just check the recipe. Honestly, crafting grid is three Larimar, a crafting bench. Easy. And then this thing itself. Do I have a magnet? I do. Turn that on and come here, please. Thank you. All right, and now... Put you there, you there, and this was not the order. <laughs> oh, it worked. Nice. Crafting a grid. This is a gigantic upgrade because I can now craft in this station. And, and that may sound like a trivial thing, but it really isn't. Uh, first of all, I gotta bind this to JEI synchronized. So now if I want to, for example, make a perfect Beniotite, then all I gotta do is click this here, click the plus button, and look at this. Oh, that's so much faster. And then I can do the same with a catalyst, for example. So I can craft a catalyst and take it out. That's not that great. Now I'm gonna get stuck crafting these. Uh, that's that's decent. Might just as well re-roll these. Ooh, positive negative. That's pretty good. I think I'm gonna re-roll this as well. Faster is not that great. Ah, uh, that's terrible. <laughs> I got one new. This makes me really, really happy. And it's funny how you sometimes just realize things as you're, <laughs> as you're just running around in the world. And the plan for today? Well, I want to try and make use of my rich modifier, this incredible catalyst. I want to try and build a crystal that has at least uh, plentiful. And so then, and then, and then add rich and get a vault with a lot of vault ores and gems and stuff like that. And as such, it all starts with a vault rock. And I may also want to do another vault farm today, as in letting the crystal tell me what farm, but we'll see. Uh, eh, nah, 
not, none of these are, are like, like andersite. That's a scaringly high amount of andersite, honestly. I don't think we're going to need to make an iron farm anytime soon. Iron is quite common inside the vaults. I wonder if cobweb is farmable somehow. Oh, you can craft it. I didn't even... I didn't even know we had that recipe. Uh, we need to farm wrapped mobs. Cobweb is another one of those that's it's not going to increase in in amounts very much. So I think we're fine with just raiding a mine shaft every now and again with some shears. I should really look into making a bone meal farm though very very soon. But seeing how I do have enough for this crystal, I don't think that's going to be priority. So once again. <laughs> this this little trick is amazing. Just get sucked straight in. Now, how about that andersite? I have 1,700, but I do have a bit of compressed stuff. I don't think I'm gonna have 6,000 though. That feels uh, very far, far out there. 4,400 plus these leaves me needing 2,739. I mean, andersite can be created with diorite and cobblestone, but I'm also in need of diorite constantly. I um, wonder if there is another cool way of making andersite. Oh, this is interesting. I can compact gravel and flint. Both of these are farmable with lava and then get andersite. I want to try that out because I assume that that is going to consume the lava, which leaves me with another problem. But I'm, you should never assume I'm going to test it. And I believe my pressing thing is still in the fort. Yep, right over here. Oh, I had another crank there. So if I put this here and the crank on the side, and then I don't really know how this works, but I assume I fill this with lava. So that's one bucket. It's at 100 mil. And then I got to throw two of those in. And then just do this. Oh, oh yes. Okay, that is my underside block, but I don't think yeah it did consume the lava so if i do this uh 10 more times that lava should be empty let's just make sure this should be the last andersite i'm gonna get out of this yep okay so if i want to do this which honestly this is a cool thing but then i would need to automate lava which i can do through thermal expansion using obsidian or magma blocks oh wait a minute create allows me to mix Cobblestone, which we have already generated with one of these mixers and then one of these blazes underneath and that gives me a tiny bit of lava Hmm, I do have a mixer and I do have a blaze generating thing. So I wonder <laughs> My poor potion station is just getting getting broken apart and I crank this yes okay so then if I drop a cobblestone in here and heat this up and then crank it nothing happens <laughs> oh does it need to be superheated I don't really know how to superheat oh I need a blaze cake okay oh it's something super advanced I need to take lava in a blaze cake base and then I get a blaze cake. I'm assuming that they have thought about the fact that this nets me lava at the end of the day. Because I need a quarter of a bucket of lava to make one blaze cake. So I assume that I get at least a quarter of a bucket of lava back per every blaze cake. And a blaze cake base requires cinder flour. Which is just netherrack crushed. Okay, so if I want to set this up, I'm going to need a lot of different things just to create the lava. I think I'll pass for now and just go and mine this andersite out, but this is a potential, a potential thing I'd want to get into in the future. <laughs> it is definitely a bit of a rabbit hole though. I shall resort to good old mining. Oh, by the way, I did find my pickerang. It was, uh, it was in a box upstairs in a chest that I had some materials for my mushroom in. Now mining almost 3000 andersite is quite a big task, but... Quark makes it a lot easier if I go to my modded lands and locate a forest, any type of forest should do. Although I'm not sure about these modded forests, I may want a vanilla forest like that over there. Yes, Quark will generate large chunks of andersite in this forest. And on the contrary, there won't be any diorite, which is really nice for my eyes, and there won't be any granite. So once I find a vein of uh, of andersite, it should be a lot of andersite. Although I forgot my torches, so 
Gotta go back home. And by the way, it's great to always carry a waystone around when doing these sorts of mining expeditions. Anyway, as I was saying, quark generates massive chunks of andesite, granite, and uh, diorite. And it does so based on the biome. I know that forest biomes is the place for andesite, so... As long as I can... That's not andesite. As long as I can find one big or one piece of andesite, I should have a lot of andesite. Oh, here we go. Let's see. This should be... There should be a lot of andesite in this vein. Yeah, look at this. Oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I have now filled up three full Schalke boxes. <laughs> three full Schalke boxes of andesite, and there's still andesite here. Yeah, these uh, these mega veins are very good. Anyway, time to head home. Let's name this andesite deposit. And one chalk box is 1,700-ish, I think. So this is this is more than I need. Way more than I need. Yep, complete with a lot of andesite to spare. Nice. I am going to make you a powerful crystal. Hopefully. <laughs> Do need to hit plentiful on one of these. And... Nope, nothing there, and no plentiful here either. Now, I could add personal space and difficult, and by doing so, re-rolling the crystal, so I may want to do that. I do really like the idea of an ore focus crystal to have personal space, though, so I don't have mobs all the way, all the time around me, so I'm going to do that. And please so, show plentiful. Uh, nay, how about here? Nope. Oh, I mean, yes. But it does have fatiguing, which is like one of the worst combinations <laughs> because fatiguing adds mining fatigue, making me unable to mine very efficiently. Did I get a mining fatigue immunity idol at any point? I don't think I did. It is a very rare thing on an idol to have mining fatigue immunity. And nope, it doesn't look like it. Hmm. That is a little bit annoying. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I am going to check if this crystal recipe is easy, and that looks very doable. I don't have enough snowballs, but I do have a ton of snow blocks, and I can make a shovel. And this should be pretty satisfying, actually, bear in mind this. Yes, brilliant. Hopefully I get lucky with this crystal. Let's see, there is... nope, nothing there, and nothing there. Hmm. Now, Optimistic, Difficult, and Hunger is a really good one to add in order to re-roll, because Optimistic, obviously, that adds five minutes to the vault. And the more time I have, the more stuff I can mine, in theory. Mm, nothing, and no. Wait, 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 I just realized something. Tired, this curse here, adds mining fatigue. Fatiguing makes it so that mobs gives me mining fatigue when they hit me. Which is not as bad, because I do have personal space on this crystal. So, hmm. That may be the best choice after all. But, seeing how I have some catalyst fragments, I think, before I do anything, I think I'm just gonna craft up a few more, because I do have a healthy amount of Benutite, and a decent amount of Alexandrite. Besides, I'm, I'm investing into more gems here, so it makes sense to use up my catalyst fragments. That's a positive random. Safe zone is always good to keep. Ooh, positive and inert. Inert just removes any cooldown reduction, which honestly is not a big deal yet. That's a good one. That's that's also a good one, actually. Clumsy is minus parry. Positive and poisonous is not bad. Wow, I'm I'm having some good luck here today. And personal space and a curse. I think every single one of these are worth keeping, actually. Put the random positive in there, and then I don't know how to fit all of these in. Actually, I'm going to make a little change in my organization here. I'm going to take all of my catalyst that has a static positive, so these six, and I'm going to put them in my system. With refined storage, you can search for sub tags using a hashtag. So if I search rich, it's going to show me my rich catalyst. And that is, that's actually easier to keep track than having, having non-randoms in here. All right, so let's check this again. There's our plentiful. We didn't get anything exciting on the new ones and nothing here either. So yes. I'm actually going to go ahead and add this and rely on personal space. Of course, there will be mobs from spawners still, so I do have to be a little bit careful with not getting hit. 
but that is gonna help me out. And then let's see if we can find something that adds time, like extended. Optimistic would be ideal. Oh, but then it adds mining fatigue. <laughs> That's that's a little bit unlucky. I so wish I had a mining fatigue immunity idol. Hmm, what if I take my other crystal and re-roll it using this, which adds extended, meaning that this crystal will have a total of seven and a half minutes extra. And then see if I find a good plentiful. Nope, nothing there and nothing there. Dang it! Well, this crystal is, is very timely, but it doesn't really have anything else going for it yet. Now, what I could do is take my super catalyst, because truly, this is a super catalyst. It, I may not even get another one of these in this world. I could do this, which would make it very purple and pink, which is nice. But it would also re-roll any positive modifier and only positive modifiers of those other catalysts. So... In theory, I do have a chance of getting a time modifier. It's not ideal to do this, but yes. There we go. The, the anvil disagreed. Now let's see. Uh, it rerolled this to extended. <laughs> that's not that's not great. I don't see any other... I see extended here, but rush is minus 10 minutes, so that would be terrible. And... Hmm... No, you know what? I think I'm going to be satisfied with this crystal. Oh, and you know what I forgot to check when I logged on this morning? The soul charge shop. Ah, uh, Kellis is not a bad trade, but nah, not, nothing special. The time has come for my really good crystal. It's not like Omega good, but it is seriously a very good crystal. And the goal is, of course, to get as many vault ores as possible. I'm a bit nervous because this this crystal is a bit of an investment, but hopefully everything goes well. Of course, the ideal scenario here would be to find a mine, but even a couple of uh, of crystal caverns would be really good. This room also has quite a bit of ore in it in the water, but I'm going to be focusing on just getting through as many rooms as possible first while I have time in the vault. And this is a kill the boss vault. I'm not really gonna focus on that either. I will take this though and, and look at this. Because I have these modifiers, these vault ores, oh no. <laughs> Did I burn it? Nope. These vault or these ores are more likely to be vault ores. And I didn't burn that either. Nice. I did prepare with two backup Paxels, one being sturdy and the other one being fragile. And the Paxel I'm holding. If I do find a mine though, I should probably have brought my netherite pickaxe, honestly, the, the one with mending. Personal space is very underestimated, by the way. It feels so good to just not worry about mobs constantly, but rather worry about mobs if I go into a situation that I choose. Like, for example, triggering a mob trap. <laughs> Hello there. Let's see, the aquarium room, the end world, crystal caverns, or the mine. Those are the best things I can find. Uh, currently in this vault. I find a lot of these rooms though, like a lot of them. That's obelisk number three. Could have totally done a speed run here. Oh, oh no, it's a dragon room. Ooh, I mean, it's a really good room. Not what I'm looking for. Though. I thought for a second that this was a mine room. Whenever I do a run like this, it, it is easy to hallucinate. I am actually not going to go down and check this village room. I'm just going to keep Keep on tracking. Tracking? Is that really correct? I think it's trucking. I'm gonna keep on trucking. I've already spent five minutes in this vault. Please give me... Oh! That's a crystal... That's a crystal cavern. Yes! Okay, brilliant. I also want to get the green corendrum, remember? And actually, I would love... I would love all of these corendrum blocks. That's gorgeous. Nice, right off the bat. Brilliant. I don't know if I'm currently more excited about the corendrum blocks than I am about ores. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That was a lot of mobs. Oh no, it went from peaceful to being pretty crowded. And I just got hit by something, so I can't mine. I'm gonna hide in here, get all of these. Oh! Oh, that's an echo ore! Un unbelievable! Oh, that is... That is so huge. This crystal definitely just paid... Paid for itself with... With that fine. What a, what is happening? Oh, I'm so fatigued that I can't even hit because it also affects my attack speed. That's bad. <laughs> that is an incredible, incredible find. And I'm actually doing really good, I think, at least, on these uh, 
on these Corrender blocks as well, which I am absolutely prioritizing, by the way. Well, I think I got the most important things in this room, so I am out. Four minutes-ish I spent in there. Not bad! That's obelisk number four. And I've actually explored a decent amount of this vault already. I feel very efficient today. Oh, this room may also have... Yes, it does have some Corendrum blocks. Actually, this is uh, wasting quite a bit of time from, from my... From my good crystal. That is a western room. Don't need to go there. Another obelisk. That's five. And that's number six. I'm not gonna activate that yet though. 12 minutes remaining. There's still there's still chance for me to find one of the super rooms, but unfortunately I have explored more than half of the vault, so I'm at the point where I have to turn back and cross through this vault in order to get rooms I haven't seen. And there's another obelisk. Oh, and a geode! Oh, this is a rare spawn and a lot of good ores. Lucky to get that in, in a plentiful rich vault. Oh, I should I should probably grab the yellow as well. <laughs> and I think I'm now exploring new rooms. Yes, and that's the end. Okay, now it's all about getting lucky. There's another obelisk. It would be really nice with one more ore heavy room. That's a western room. And that is yet another obelisk. This may very be well be where I fight because I think I may be out of room. So I think I may have explored every single room in this vault. One crystal cave, not a single end room or aquarium or mine. Ah, oh, that's a little bit sad. I mean, I'm not too sad about it. I did find an echo ore and that's worth like 64 Benutite ores. I wonder if there's anything in the water here except for, except for mobs, any... Uh, any ores? Ooh, yes, there is a little bit. Oh, unfortunately, there seems to be a lot of mobs in this room. It's not great for fighting the boss. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> it's actually going to be pretty harsh to fight the boss in here. With four minutes remaining, I don't think I have much choice. So I guess, uh, I guess, I guess um, I'm going to have to do it. The problem is that mining fatigue does affect attack speed, so. That's a little bit scary, but oh my god, Captain Sparkles, my main man. No, what is he? What are you doing? He's just heading away to the other mobs. Dude, I need you. I need you. He's, he's slowing. He's slowing Boogeyman. That's great. Oh, and he attacks very fast. Why does he attack so much faster than me? Come on. Come on, Jardun. You got this. Oh, oh, oh. Don't read them. Yes, got him. I should be able to execute any second. Execute. Yes. Whew! Captain Sparkles is great. He is very soothing for the mobs with his guitar. And you stop. I'll try and get all of the soul shards I can here. But all things considered, that went well. I didn't get as many ores as I hoped, but the echo ore is fantastic. And I got a ton of corundum blocks, I think. Lots of red, some or actually not that many orange. Oh, and only seven of the violet. They they look great, the violet ones. I did really felt like I mined more <laughs> than eight, than seven of the violet for a total of eight. But uh, this is this is decent. Now let's see how I did with the ores. Johnny, uh, I got one gorgonite, one tabium, one fun swede, one iscalium, and two puffium. As far as the legendary goes, that's decent. And then of course the echo one, and. 25 Benutite, 28 Lamar. Yeah, that's not fantastic for a plentiful and rich, but considering I only found one orum, I mean I did explore the entire vault. I I'm I'm happy with that. We can't always win. Now let's have a look in the boss crate. Set of leggings. Oh, rare plus, okay. An unidentified relic, a gift a statue, and then some other stuff. Concrete. Okay, that's not bad. Let's have a look at the rare plus leggings. Leggings is the one thing I need, actually. So, please be good. Oh, they just skipped epic. Uh, six armor, one level, and CDR. So, mm, yeah, I mean, they're not bad. They're not terrible. Oh, 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 wow. Okay, I gained five levels. Six levels. Wow. That's, that's crazy. I gained six levels. I have 11 unspent skill points! And also, I'm on a new loot tier now. I'm on 75 loot tier and mob tier. 
That's uh, that's scary. Now, 11 skill points. That's That requires an investment. It would cost me a total of 9 to maximize Mega Jump, which would, on Shockwave, give me 100% of my damage in AoE, so I can constantly do AoE attacks. And that would be really nice. The cooldown would be 7 seconds. That's a huge upgrade, actually. I could go another haste level, I could go another speed level, I could even maximize soul hunter. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of things I could go. I think I'm gonna actually do something weird. I'm gonna take water breathing for two, which unlocks fire resistance for five. Which I just realized is completely useless when I'm wearing my flamingo. What am I doing? Uh, the, the reason I did that was because last time when I was looting, I was constantly on fire, but I remember that I was wearing my luck chest plate. Oh, that may not have been the best of investments. <laughs> fire resistance. Oh. Oh, I actually have a flask to remove it if I, if I regret it. How expensive are these? Not very expensive, some pay night. And the water ones are just benutite. Well, it's good that we can uh, regret things, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to 11 unspent skill points. I'm gonna take another level in haste for five. Yeah, haste makes me loot better. Oh, but I'm level 75 plus now. I have unlocked the archetyped skills. These are all very cool. And for anyone who's played in RPG games, this is as, as close to classes you get in Vault Hunters. You can only select one of these and there are... Uh, five different to choose from. Ward, which is a defensive archetype, gain the ability to generate yellow hearts as an absorption shield while not being hit for at least 10 seconds. The amount of yellow hearts that can be generated is 6 plus scaled from max HP. Ward also gives the player additional parry and while at full absorption shield, the player is granted regeneration. Choosing Ward negates any healing effect from Leech. So a leeching sword is useless if I go ward, but it has natural regeneration. It may be a bit difficult to understand, but basically, if I take ward level 1, I would automatically start generating these yellow hearts all the way till I'm, let's see, I'm at 6 yellow hearts, which is max by default. And then from here on, if I reach 6, while while not getting hit, I will, I will get the regeneration buff. A very powerful defensive archetype. Next one is barbaric, and this one is way more offensive. The player generates rage per hit while attacking. Every point of rage increases the base damage of the player but decreases any healing effect by 0.5%. Rage decays after several seconds of not hitting a mob. So on level 1 I would generate 2 rage per hit, I would get 1.5% extra damage per hit and it would decay after 4 seconds of not hitting a, a mob. But at the same time I would also lose healing effects so I would actually leech slower uh, and, and, and drinking healing potions is not very viable with Barbaric. This is a very good offensive thing though. Glass Cannon is also super offensive. The player gets a big damage buff, but takes more damage from every damage source. So on level 1 I would increase my damage with 150%, but I would take 50% more damage. It's a big risk reward uh, archetype. Next one is Commander, and I believe this to be the most popular archetype among the archetypes. The player gets a damage boost and decrease the cooldown for the ability Summon Eternal, but at the same time increases damage taken and reduces damage dealt. This is a little bit weirdly written because this is not really what happens. What it does is uh, the, the, the player gets a damage boost to their Eternals, but their, their, own, their own damage is actually decreased. Here's a cool thing though, on the ultimate level, your Eternals can't die. If they do unalive in the vault, you can still resummon them and you never need to resurrect them with a life scroll. This is a very powerful archetype. It basically makes you into a summoner, relying fully on your children. And the final archetype, Frenzy, possibly my favorite one, but also the most scary one, passively increases the player's damage massively while below a certain threshold of total health. And on level 1, it increases your damage with 200% while at 30% or less Health. So if I would have 10 hearts, that would mean that while I'm at 3 hearts, I get the damage bonus. And of course, the more hearts I have, the better Frenzy becomes, because it scales off the current max health. Hmm... It may not be worth going into an archetype just yet, but it would give me a great damage bonus to go into either Barbaric, Glass Cannon or Frenzy at this point in time. 
And I am very quickly falling behind in terms of scaling with my uh, level, what is this? Level 28 scrappy or common sword. <laughs> And I can't take another level in strength until level 90, so that's not going to help. I could also start looking into Fatal Strike, which basically gives me a, a, a chance of dealing a massive Fatal Blow that does a lot of damage. I honestly feel like maxing Mega Jump and starting to use Shockwave, which is just an AoE damage spell, would be very helpful. Oh, and actually... I can make I can make one more skill point, so I could have seven in total. I need nine for Mega Jump Shockwave though. It does also get very good though. I think I think I'm gonna put my four skill points in there and then save up for the last level. So right now Shockwave has a radius of five and does 80% of my damage every 10 seconds I use it. And to demonstrate, hello there. Yes. <laughs> it's a it's it's a very good offensive skill. I'm happy for this. I'm happy about this. Unfortunately, though, that's all she wrote. Today has gone extremely quick. Now, I'm really interested in hearing what your favorite archetype, either by playing yourself or by just imagining based on my explanation, is. So please do let me know that down below in the comments. But that's going to do it for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. I am very happy with my crafting grid. It's going to help out so much and speed things up so much for me. And I'm very worried about my leveling uh, scaling uh, still. But uh, it's, it's a challenge. Anyway, I, did ho I do hope that you have enjoyed it. If you did, please do hit the like button down below. And if you're brand new, consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next episode.